Hi everybody, my name is Delaney Brogan. I'm in marketing at Yamaha Motor Canada and this is Andrew Scott, our incredible product specialist. And we are here today to walk through, kind of do a little bit of a side-by-side -side savvy session, if you will, um, give you some riding tips, maybe help along the trail if you're new to it or if you've been in it for a while. Um, I'm going to be asking the questions, Andrew's really going to be running the show. Do you want to just uh, hop into it then, right away? Sounds good. So, we're going to start off going through the basics. I'm just going to ask questions like I've never seen them before. The cool thing about Side by Side is it's very familiar for anybody that's ever driven a car or truck. From the driver perspective, you have a steering wheel, an accelerator pedal, a brake pedal, a parking brake, and a gear select lever. Very familiar. For the driver, the seat is adjustable forward and back, so you can, it tailors to a lot of different sizes, which is maybe good for us here today. <laughs> Steering wheel is also adjustable up and down, so again, also good for, uh, for different lengths of arms and reaches. Because this is an off-road machine, it obviously has selectable four-wheel drive, so either in a two-wheel drive, a four-wheel drive, or a fully diff lock setting. It does come obviously full, full lit, so you can keep your headlights on when you're on the trail to improve your visibility, but in low light conditions, so it also offers a, a high beam as well. It does offer seat belts to hold you in position, and the seat belt itself is shoulder adjustable for different height riders on both the driver and passenger side. So let's okay. go over to the passenger side. So if I'm your passenger and I'm trusting you with my life, um, and I want to hold on to something, I'm assuming I'm grabbing this, but can I move it closer? It's adjustable, correct? It is adjustable. So the seat itself is fixed. Mm -hmm. The hand grab bar is adjustable in and out to, to make a more comfortable position, depending on where you are, because it's important to brace yourself when you're riding on especially more technical terrain or at faster speeds. For both the driver and passenger, there's soft touch points wherever your knees will touch the center console or the door. It just makes it a, a little bit more premium feeling, but also more comfortable when you're, when you're riding on the trail. So this model itself is an SE, so it does come with the rear view mirror as well, standard from factory. In all X2-1000, what this model is, as well as R-Max and X2-850 models, there's multiple accessory points where you can add uh, rocker switches for all kinds of different accessories. Now that we're actually in the cabin of the vehicle, you'll want to adjust it for yourself. Obviously, you can adjust the seat as forward or back as you want. Adjust the steering wheel so it's in a comfortable position that allows you to operate the gas and brake. It's your shifter, you can put it in the high for most of your driving. There is a low speed if you get into more technical obstacle terrain that uh, you'll want to run at uh, a lower RPM. Neutral is just that and obviously reverse. Your parking brake, which is obviously on now, being in the up position. Over here is where your four wheel drive selector switch is. So whether you're in two wheel, four wheel drive, or full wheel with diff lock. Mm -hmm. Below that is your light. There's an off position, a low beam, and a high beam position. It's always recommended to even just have your low beams on for improved visibility on the trail for other riders. Winch control. So if you're in, in stuck and you actually need to use your winch, this is how you control it up on the dash. It just features on this model. And this is your meter where you would see all your vehicle information, including your speedometer, your odometer, fuel gauge, your four-wheel four drive status. In this case, a D mode, which when you add an accessory, you can switch between sport, trail, and crawl. Gear position, whether in your high, low, neutral, or reverse. Parking brake, alarm, seatbelt, notification, as well as a reminder to always put your helmet on. We're in, we're locked, we're loaded, we're buckled. All right. And we're in, currently we're in H, so high. So yes, yeah, so we'll put ourselves in H, make sure the parking brake is off. Got it. Seat belt's on. Yep. Comfortable. Good point is not to wrap your thumbs around the steering wheel. Okay. It's dangerous. We actually built into the steering wheel a point where you can put your thumbs so that you're in a good position. That way, if you do hit a bad obstacle, your hands will slide off it and not in, okay. injure you. Right. We but really did are, think of everything. We really did think of everything. You certain? just love to see it. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Show me how it works. Go for it. Here we go. So when you're in two-wheel drive, you're so, going to be in high most of the time, right? Yes. Unless you are 
driving in a slower, more technical terrain, okay. uphill, downhill, yep. you will typically be in high range. Okay. Low range is just for that slow speed maneuverability yeah. and to change the gearing so it's a little bit easier on the clutching. Okay. Uh, we look at two wheel drive, four wheel drive, and four wheel diff lock. Yeah. That adjusts the drive train to accommodate for your different terrain. Harder packed flat trails, two wheel drive is sufficient. It just drives power to the rear wheels like a typical pickup truck even. But as soon as conditions start getting a little bit looser, okay. whether it's sand, loose dirt, mud, you'll want to enter it into a four wheel drive, bring the front wheels into the equation. So when, when do you think you'd start looking at switching to that four wheel drive mode? Well, I think once we just turn the corner and go on to this next trail, okay. we'll see some good conditions for it. Okay. Okay, so let's let's test out four wheel drive. I've got both hands on the wheel here, so we're good. Or I guess the holy the holy heck bar. And do you feel it? Like, can you feel it in the steering wheel when it's in four wheel drive? No, no. That's the nice part. Even whether you're in two wheel or four wheel, it doesn't change. Okay. The feel, the driving feel on on the steering wheel, the EPS definitely helps with that. Okay. drive you're just using those rear two wheels and then four wheel it's the addition open differential of the front two of wheels. the front okay and then fully dip lock mode is locking that front differential okay for a true four wheel drive okay nice and so you can you can lock that differential in high or low correct it doesn't matter if you're in high or low to lock you can you, know, you, you can do it on the fly but it's best to come to a stop if you can yeah engaging the differential okay. will then lock the front differential together and it forces the front wheels to work together. Okay. So when you get into a really loose condition, whether it's slippery mud or sand or even snow, it forces the wheels to work together and helps claw you forward yeah. in that gnarlier terrain. There's a diff, you can feel the diff lock in the steering yeah. uh, when you're turning, like the EPS kind of doesn't help the diff lock, but the diff lock you don't use on a regular basis. You're not gonna be in it all the time. No, you'll only wanna use it when you absolutely need it. Okay. Otherwise, just put yourself back into a standard four wheel drive. Now, for some of you watching, you might think it's a little bit too basic what we're going over, but in the coming months, we're gonna have a few more episodes of these side-by-side -side savvy sessions um, with myself and our product specialist, Andrew, here. We've gotta walk you through some of the basics just of side-by-sides in general, because. A lot of people, as we see the market grow, there's so many new people uh, in the industry within Canada and it's incredible to watch it grow. So we just figured kind of go over the basics and then get more and more in depth and more, maybe more fun a little bit as, uh, as the sessions go on. But if you have anything specific you want to learn, let us know in the comments below for sure. And we would uh, happily, or I will happily ask Andrew to, uh, to teach me. On your for your for your benefit. So I think we we've, we've touched on all the important points here of of when to lock the diff, four wheel drive, two wheel drive, kind of the essence of high low, some of the basics, just of the controls. Definitely keep an eye out for the next episode. Uh, definitely going to go over some other some other options here. There's going to be maybe some cornering cornering tips, shall we say? There's lots lots in the uh, in the queue here to come. And uh, thank you, Andrew, for walking me through everything. And, uh, and yeah, this has been a, a lovely episode of Side by Side Savvy Sessions, and uh, we'll see you next time.